Alrighty guys, Madman Mondello here, coming at you live from the Garden Yoga Rush here in beautiful Alabama. Alright. Now, about oh, a couple months ago I bought a Raspberry Pi 4. In fact, I bought several of them. And um, uh, quite a few of them went to Retro uh, Retro Pi and uh, went to some customers or whatnot. And those were Raspberry Pi 3s. The reason why we went with Raspberry Pi 3s was because the software is already um it's already done and there's not a lot of experimentation and you know the raspberry pi 4 it's new architecture so of course you know there's lots of stuff to go through that has got to get fixed in order to be able to utilize the uh unit properly so right now we went ahead and um you know i went ahead and you know i got this raspberry pi 4 and i want to do some experimentation with it all right because, you know, a lot of people associate me with Xbox and everything else. That's only one of the things I do. I do a lot of stuff, okay? Like right now, I'm building an ARM image for Windows 10 that's going to run on this thing. I already had one running, but it was slow. And what I'm doing is I'm, in, uh, I'm going ahead and I'm going to be able to initialize a virtual KM, uh, KVM mode on this thing. So I can have virtual kernel, kernelize kernel virtualization. Thank you. So... Anyway, um, went ahead and uh, we got this thing. Now, mind you, I didn't want to use just a standard Raspberry Pi. I wanted to do something a little different, all right? So, we got some uh, expansion components for this one. And this is my test subject right here, this poor thing. Um, <laughs> you all know how I am. <laughs> anyway, went ahead and um, what I did was is I went ahead and I got this thing here. Now, we put a power board on it which actually utilizes 12 volts instead of 5 volts because the wimpy 5 volt is not going to handle it, okay? I mean, it's just it, 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 not, not, not enough amp, just not enough amperage, okay? You know, I mean, uh, 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 2 amps, 2.5 amps, 3 amps the most, I'm like, no. So I went ahead and we got a LEDMO 12 volt uh, power supply at 5 amps, okay? Because I, like I said, this is my test subject. I'm doing some crazy stuff with this thing. Anyway, what this is, it's a 4 gigabyte single board computer. Right now, it actually started off life as a microcontroller, all right, but it's not a microcontroller anymore. The Raspberry Pi Foundation took this way beyond a microcontroller now. This has got a um, Cortex A73 or A72 processor in it, all right, 28NM. And, um, you know, they went ahead and they broke the 4. Well, well, they broke the one gig barrier, and it's got four gigs of uh, DDR on it, which is really cool. All right, um, I was quite impressed with the hardware architecture on this, because for this thing, it's like I said, it's n not a microcontroller anymore. The damn thing is a computer. All right, and um, you know when you can combine operating systems and do crazy stuff like you can in, in Linux, uh, you can come up with some really, really crazy stuff. All right, and um, yeah, I found a fellow that uh, did an image of Ian, which is 19.10 in Ubuntu, which is coming out October 17th, but it's already running on this thing. All right, and um, he completely redid everything on it, and um, you know, it, it's it's like a combination between a Raspberry a Raspberry Pi Buster and a couple of other. I, I mean, he just went nuts. All right, and he he wrote this thing and it's really a good operating system. I really do like it. Um, what I did with this was, is, um, you know, I went ahead and I was like, alright, well, I love this operating system, and it ran on an SD card. And then I was like, okay, well, the Pi here, we have, well, we have our power here. And then what I did was, is I bought an X855 um, expansion board for it. And coupled that with a Rockfish um, SSD drive, which is connected to what? Well, Bluetooth 3.0. My read-write speeds are right around 400 and something odd megabytes per second, okay? Which is, like, really up there. But, you know, like I said, it ran on an SD card. Well, I went one better, and I went in there, and there's a couple lines in the boot directory that you can change. And um, it was pretty easy. And I mean, you know, I just changed it and directed it towards SDA2. All right. So this little uh, SD card, which has the image on it, actually, is just a bootloader. That's all that, that is. 
it doesn't do anything except start the pipe. And the only reason why it's there even right now is because there is no boot options for USB 3 yet on this thing because they haven't been written yet. So all I did was I pointed it towards the root file system on you know on the SSD and of course it fired on off and it ran. I was like alright now there are some other options in the config.txt that you can tweak. Alright now if you don't want to void your warranty don't do this okay but um, you know I went ahead and of course I went a little nuts and um, I wanted it I, well, look, they had overclock 700 on the arm, and I was like, 700 on this thing. 700, really? That sucks. So I was like, all right. So we did a little command called over voltage, okay? And uh, we tweaked it by about 7, which is about a quarter of an amp. And um, then I went ahead and... Um, I set the overclock speed on it, and, uh, well, I'll show it to you once I go ahead and get this thing up and running, which I'm about to, all right, because uh, we're going to boot this thing, I want to show you what it can do. Now, mind you, these things can be used for everything, from, now, from a desktop, to friggin' a retro arcade machine, to running Windows 10 ARM Edition, okay, which I've done. Um, now, we're going to boot this thing up. And uh, it's like a little Wolverine, okay? It's a beast. Now, I got this remote here, and that comes with the uh, LIR here. So it starts up, and as you can see, a nice little blue light letting us know there's power. A little green light, that sure, uh, that means it's accessing the SD card. Now, we got our four little Raspberry Pis, and as you can see, now it's accessing the SSD. Now watch this. You all know how long it takes to boot up an OS, okay? Takes it a while, right? Yeah, well, guess what? Yeah, that's this thing right here, okay? Right now, I got this thing overclocked at 2 gigahertz, okay, which is, <laughs> it was, it's a little, you know, thank God I got a fan on this thing. <laughs> if you don't have a fan, don't do this. I'm telling you right now, you will, your Raspberry Pi will be baked beautifully at 350 degrees, okay? Um, especially if you use the turbo option that you open it up to and you know it does all kinds of stuff see it even has this little uh it's uh, yeah it's something else so anyway we're running at uh, two gigahertz uh, ram usage is eight percent okay out of 3.81 gigabytes and um file systems 440 gigabytes okay now mind you when you boot this thing if you do one of these things uh remember to expand the uh root file system, because if you don't expand it, you're going to run out of space, especially when you try to do an update on it, because it's going to be funny, because it's going to sit there and say, I'm out of space, all right, so remember to expand the file system using the disk tools, okay, now I'm not going to give you a tutorial on disk tools and all that crap, no, that's not what this is about, this is about showing you how quickly and how cleanly this thing booted, okay, and I'm using software that is purely experimental, all right, now, okay, here you go, We'll open up uh, Firefox. It opens up faster than on my desktop, which happens to be a Core i5. Okay, <laughs> like wow. Okay, um, look, let's do this. Okay, tell you what we'll do. I'm gonna set you up over here so you can see. All right, and then what I'm gonna do here, if you want to see, you know, what it what it's actually capable of. All right, let me shrink this down a little bit here. Okay. You can see it's pretty snappy. All right. Oh, uh, let's see here. Here, here's a good topic. Everyone's gonna love problems with Windows 10. Okay. Now, Microsoft issues upgrade warnings for millions. Windows 10 warning for 800 million users. How to fix printing issues after the latest update on Windows 10. <laughs> this is the most crappiest operating system I've ever seen in my life. You Windows lickers, man. <laughs> Well, actually, it used to be good until they decided to turn it into a service and decided to be a bunch of idiots and actually use the public for the testing ground. Nice. Microsoft, really nice, okay? So, anyway, we're going to open up a couple tabs here, okay? Let's see. We'll open up this one. We'll open up this one. We'll open up this one. Okay, and these are three. three. Now, mind you, okay, that's a tiny little machine. 
Right now, CPU usage is 97%, but my RAM is only 21% usage, okay? Which is not a big deal. Excuse me while I close this door. Um, and um, anyway, as you can see, we're loading our tabs right here. Whoops. We're loading our tabs. Dang it. Okay. We're loading our tabs right here, as you can see. And it's still... Now, that is due to my internet, actually. But, as you can see, that loaded up real nice. You know, I mean, you know, like I said, it's it's pretty cool. And it does a lot of, uh, does a lot of stuff, let me tell you. I'm very, very impressed with it. Um, as far as, let's see here. Let's see what we got here. All right, now, we'll close all this. Yeah, okay, problem with Windows 10. Yeah, okay. Now, if you're interested, uh, like YouTube, okay, how does it play YouTube? All right, well, let's take a look, shall we? Um, let's do um, something like this. Uh, yeah. Hang hey, uh, on. Here's a favorite. <laughs> okay, uh, yeah. I want to see something with video on it, okay? Yeah. After the ad, what else is new? There's ads all over the friggin' internet. They're everywhere. <laughs> ah, money makes the world go around. Okay? So anyway, as you can see, it plays video pretty good. It plays sound pretty good. I mean, I got the sound turned down on a little bit. Sorry about that, but, you know, hey. As you can see, it plays video real good. We can go full screen. And there you are. Okay? Now, mind you, this is on a crappy, a crappy monitor. Okay? This thing is capable of 4K and it's got dual output, okay, for for you know for video and everything. So you know, I mean, this thing, when they get the drivers right on this thing, it is going to be completely crazy. Now I do understand that Mesa build, the Mesa build drivers, um, they will run on this thing. Uh, you need to update to the uh, good class and you need to open up a um, a PPA, but you can do it. All right. And as you can see, though, um, you know. With nothing running, I got three percent on the CPU. I've got nothing on nothing on anything here, you know, which is like really amazing. The system runs real good. I mean, I'm not going to complain. Like I said, for a lousy fifty-five dollar uh, computer, just a couple add-ons. Like I said, you saw how fast it boots up and everything. And I mean, you know, and she's she's running real good, and she's not even hot. She's 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 just sitting there. So. Like I said, this can open up a lot of doors. Um, also being that you can run uh, kernel virtualization on it. And you can run under QEMU or KBM. And uh, you can run multiple operating systems on it as well. Um, as I said, I've been, doing, uh, I've been doing a lot of experimentation with this crazy thing. And uh, like I said, for the size of it, which is... <laughs> I mean... You know, it, it, it's tiny, okay? But it is very powerful. And they have taken this to the extreme. Really good unit, okay? But I will tell you this, look. If you're interested in one of these, you know, you can get them on Amazon. You know, there's plenty of builds out there for it. Now, mind you, though, I'm going to tell you this is bleeding edge, all right? You also have to update the raspy... Uh, the raspy files on it and to uh, and you have to update the firmware to the latest bleeding edge firmware okay but i did with this and it's fine no problems and i got a lot more features out of it too with the overclocking and all that kind of good stuff now, as you can see i mean she's just ticking along and um i am not going to complain uh the read write speed on a hard drive is unbelievable uh it's really quick and this is a cheap ssd too it is not a high-end SSD. It is a cheap one. So, you know, I mean, with that, you know, there's a lot of things that you can do. You can get a full-blown desktop, and I'm expecting Windows ARMs to ARM to boot natively very shortly, okay? And in fact, uh, with KVM enabled, they're, they're talking about almost native speeds for Windows 10 on a Pi 4, okay? So, you know, I mean, there you have it, all right? This is a really really nice little machine and like I said you could do a lot with it and if, it, if it's gonna run Windows 10 and all that 
you know what makes it real nice is is that for people who don't have a computer and but they have an RGH or whatever, eh, throw Windows 10 on it, real cheap, and then you know just throw Windows on it real cheap, and then just let it rip skip, and you can uh, go ahead and you can um, actually you can actually uh, run neighborhood on it and all that kind of good stuff. Um, you might want to check out Wine or the Wine Project, okay? Where you know you can uh, you can run. You know, SDKs, uh, you, you can run the SDK off of that if you wanted to. There's a lot of things that you can do with this thing. And, I mean, for the amount of money it costs, it's got Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, all the way up to 5 gigahertz. Two USB 3.0 ports, two USB 2.0 ports. Okay, um, you know, full-on Ethernet if you want a wired connection like I'm running right now. And there's a whole bunch of expansion coming out for it. And it also makes me want to build a cute little case for it, which I'm going to. Okay. But um, anyway, you know, just to let you know, I mean, unbelievable, really, really nice. Uh, this is this is LD uh, LDXE or something like that. Uh, I do believe that's a desktop. And of course, it's got Debian applications on it, you know, and uh, you know, graphics, internet, Office. Yes, it's got Libra and all that kind of good stuff. And it's got all the awesome mixers and everything else. And then you have system tools and disk management and your preferences and however you want to set it up. Okay. So anyway, you know, as you can see, kick-ass little machine right here. Really is. Uh, you need to check into them. So anyway, listen guys, just wanted to let you know where I was at with this thing. And, uh, you know, I'll holler at you all later. I got some RGHs to build. <laughs> okay, I got a customer I got to build too, which is going to be a giveaway for uh, GTA 5 Monty. And, um, you know, I just wanted to let you know what, I, what all I was up to. So, there you go. Anyway. Guys, you all have a good one, and I'll holler at you later. Take it easy.